Actor Matthew McConaughey took center stage in the White House briefing room over the summer to plead for gun control in the wake of the Uvalde, Texas elementary school massacre. Now the actor is once again pushing for gun control, this time in a lengthy essay for Esquire magazine where he's calling upon Americans to meet in the middle on gun policy. Inside the essay, McConaughey writes, most Americans, myself included, don't stand on the political fringes. We are reasonable and responsible and we share more values than we're being told we do. And we believe that meeting each other in the middle is in service of the greater good. But is it always a good idea to meet in the middle as opposed to standing our ground and fighting for real effective change, especially with all the problems now boiling over in America? Let's bring in tonight's final guest to discuss just that. Please welcome actor and producer Zachary Ty Bryan, who everyone at home might recognize as playing Brad Taylor on the 90s classic sitcom Home Improvement. Zachary, welcome to the program. So glad to have you here, my friend. Thank you both for having me. Hey, so what do you make of Matthew McConaughey's call to meet in the middle? Do you think that we should be meeting in the middle on such important issues? Well, you know, to me, that's just part of the Democratic playbook, kind of their repertoire, you know, uh, meeting in the middle. What does that actually mean? You know, it's do as I say, not as I do most of the time. I mean, look at the movies that has made him a multimillionaire. I mean, there's guns everywhere. I'm a big fan of Matt's. I think he's a really good guy. I'm sure he has a really great heart. But I think at the end of the day, like meeting in the middle is not what this country was really founded on. I mean, we were founded on individuality. We come from different cultures. We come from different races. We come from different family backgrounds and religions. I mean, that's kind of what's made up America over the years. And uh, I think it's just time to start respecting one another and, and respecting each other's beliefs and, and what we want for this country. And then we leave it up to the voters. I mean, it's, it's really quite simple and logical. Zachary, you bring up two really good points. Uh, the melting pot in America, which I think is what's so beautiful about this country, in addition to respecting each other, but it seems like there's no more respect, that it's chaos, division, and I also think that it's the left that is so intolerant of anyone who does not agree with them. So where can we find these issues that we can coexist and actually find solutions? Well, you know, I, it's so funny you say that because you're absolutely right. I mean, pretty much everything that they accuse us of doing, I feel like they're actually doing. Um, I mean, the way we, we have to come together, and, and what they're really good at, too, is labeling. I mean, you know, whenever I post something on Instagram or one of my social media sites, I mean, the first thing I get is, you know, you're racist or, or you're a bigot or, you know, it, it, they come up with these, like, these one-liners that just stick. And then their followers just really fall hook, line, and sinker for them. I mean, in order to coexist, again, it goes back to respecting one another's beliefs. And, 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 and we're, we're individuals. I mean, it's really, it's really simple when you, when you, when you break it down. Um, yeah, the left is, is definitely just, they're, they're on one these days. It, it's definitely a, a, a great time to be alive because we are definitely on opposite sides of the spectrum. Um, but again... You know, I think it boils down to moral clarity, um, you know, whether it comes to abortion, uh, gun safety. I mean, you know, I think I think uh, history is going to be on our side. Hmm. And well, Zachary, I, I applaud you for being somebody that's come from Hollywood, that's willing to be out there and be vocal and stand your ground and, and be a voice, uh, especially for the younger generation uh, of conservatives, people that maybe are afraid to come out and, and talk about how they feel about issues. Because I think you see so much of that on the left. They're so vocal, but not always as much on the right, because there is that criticism. There is that backlash, like you say, that you see uh, on Instagram. And, you know, I got to tell you, we've talked about this before. I grew up watching Home Improvement. I mean, every Tuesday night, with my parents. I mean, you look back at the 90s and it was really the last era of television where, you know, the entire family could sit down, watch something together. I mean, it embodied the nuclear family, which is really under political attack from the left right now. So do you think that home improvement could air today the way it was? I mean, what would it look like today for a network to give home improvement the green light? I mean, would Brad have been uh, non-binary? <laughs> right. Um, you know, it's so funny. There's two sides to this story because do I think the network or elites per se would green light it? Absolutely not. If it got to air, I think it would be the biggest TV show on television. So hmm. there's just a disconnect right now between, 
your higher ups and corporatism and the people that live in this country. I mean, one thing that was great about home improvement, and I'll never forget our creators teaching me this uh, way back in the day, was we weren't we weren't necessarily trying to get L.A. and New York to watch the show, but we had everything in between, and that's why it was the number one right. show. So we need to start to cater to middle America on a much bigger basis. Um, on top of that, what I loved about Home Improvement was it was a show that there was there was a moral to every story. Our family was dealing, the, the, our, my TV family was dealing with uh, a, a different issue that they were solving as a family. Um, families watched that back in the day, and they learned how to, like, for example, one, one episode was when I got busted uh, with uh, smoking marijuana. And the way they dealt with it was not demonizing me as their son. They were trying to get to the root of why. Why was I trying to get away? Why was I wanting to uh, intoxicate my brain? So I don't know. We're, we're missing shows like Home Improvement. Um, you know, there's a few select ones that I that I could, but but the majority of them are, are, are sex, drugs, right. nudity, uh, violence, and uh, and I think it's time to get back to the United States roots that that uh, that started us. And I think the '90s were a really good decade for our country. Well, it, they were, and it's why you saw like Lightyear, the movie flop, when they start introducing all this craziness. But then. And they didn't take uh, Tim Allen, obviously, as the main actor. But then you saw Top Gun Maverick just be a blockbuster hit because it was so just Americana and loving this country. But let me ask you, you're a father of five. I'm a mother of five kids. You know, I'd love to see you representing family values on TV. Uh, maybe a home improvement reboot. I think Jen wants to be part of that I reboot, would. by the way. <laughs> Give us about 20 seconds here. Of what would you do? How would you make this reboot of a show? Wow, that's a good question. Um, okay, you've got well, 20 seconds. I, I, think, I think you could start with, you know, I would say the three boys now have their own families and children. Uh, Tim and Jill are the grandma and grandpa that they get to come in and spoil I'm them. I'm in. Get to walk Zachary, away. we got to leave it there because it's live okay. TV and Greg Kelly's coming up next. But thank you, my friend, for being here. We'll have you back soon. Folks, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow.